Okay, we've already established, at least according to Paul Washer, at least according to a myriad of faithful, God-fearing, Bible preaching, Jesus believers, Boston the blood, teach. God hates sinners. So presumably, so, so presumably, for Adam and Eve sin, if they were even real, God loved them. For the devil sin, when the devil was Lucifer, presumably God loved Lucifer. So the question being, if Jesus had a sin, would God have started hating his own son? And don't hand me this, oh, God's son could never have sinned. That may be true. But what if he had, hypothetical, hi, hypothetically speaking, what if he had? And don't you dare try to blow off the question. It's trivial, unimportant. It's a question I'd ask God. And if God says, and if, and if God thumbs back, that question is a blasphemy. It's because he's afraid of the answer. Because he knows everything that is true. And if he's afraid of the answer, I curse him. I truly wanted, I wish God loved me enough to give the answer. Because the answer is out there. Had Jesus have sinned, had Jesus have sinned, would God have started hating his own son? Listen to this. So much for God loves us not because of who we are, but because of who He is. But, but but because of who He is. If God, do the math. If God is love, and God is eternal, then His love for us of every last creature should be everlasting. For them. Oh, I just remember there is a way out of it. The only person that God loves is himself. Because God is love, God loves himself. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. That's the only love God has. And he can turn his light, love off and all like a light switch. For the rest of us, trivial, insignificant creatures, puny little worthless worms, vile wretches, and angels, even the angels that never sin. He can turn his love on. And he can, he only owes it to love himself. And if he loves you and me, or an angel, it's because he turns the little light switch on to the side to love us, right? So that theology that God loves us not because of who we are, but because of who he is, well, is bullshit. Listen. I want to talk a moment about the hatred of God. Let me ask you a question. How many of you, just raise your hand, have ever Let's heard the point. the hatred of God? One, two, three. Cannot hate. No, God is love, therefore he must hate. Brother Paul, what? As one lady said, God, God doesn't hate. God is love. Therefore he cannot hate. No, God is love, therefore he must hate. Before we go to the scripture, let me just give you an idea. Do you love babies? I do. I've got a bunch of them in my house. I just love babies. The hardest thing about my ministry is being away from my baby. I don't care if they're eight feet tall, they're still going to be my baby. If I love babies, I must hate abortion. 
But do you ah? But do you hate the abortionists? Do you do you approve of abortion clinic bombings where the abortion doctors killed? As a parable in the mouth, as the legs of as, as the legs of the lame are unequal, so is a parable in the mouth of Paul Washer. I'm not gonna call him a fool because he's a godly man, but you know, the in Proverbs it says fool, but you know, God loves, so God must hate. So, as a Paul Washer loves babies, he must hate abortion. If God loves himself, he must hate sinners. Does that mean, Paul Washer, that God loves, but that you, you, you love babies and you hate the abortion doctor? So this theology that God loves a sinner not because of who we are but because of who is is bullshit. You commit sin, God will stop loving you and start hating you. And there's a verse in the Bible that says, God said, I will love them no more. The math doesn't add up. Is Jesus even, is Jesus even real? Is God even real? Or... Have we got a flawed perception of them? But the Bible says God is love. Some cheap love if God can turn it on and off like a light switch. Can the sun turn? Can the sun decide not to side, shine over a pile of shit? Because it doesn't light the shit? No, the sun, the sun still shines over the, over the pile of shit. So fuck you, God. I curse you, God, for this. I, I, I curse you, God. I curse you. I love you, but I curse you. Do you, do you love Jews? I do. You must hate the Holocaust. Do you love African Americans? You've got to hate slavery then. Amen. I'm sorry. There's just no neutrality. You see, if you truly do love that which is right, that which is perfect, that which is good, there is also an animosity. But do you hate the slave owners? But do you hate the Nazis? Or do you want them to get saved? God loves all that is right, all that is true, all that is good, all that is virtuous. But scripture after scripture after scripture in the Bible tells us that his hatred is manifest against wickedness. I could remove it if you'd like. I could be silent if you like. But I wouldn't be faithful to God. Let me give you a little more text. Psalm chapter 5. Just for a moment. Get on with it. Psalms chapter 5, verse 5. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all who do iniquity. Now, you know that wonderful statement that goes something like this? God loves the sinner and hates the sin? Just look at this text. Is that what it teaches? It's not what it teaches. But what if God is love? It should be to the glory of God to love everybody and to see that, it, that even the damned eventually get saved, even the devil and his angels. And if you cannot do this, then that verse of scripture, all things for nothing shall be impossible with God, is a god is a lie. Sorry. I know it's a pretty thing to say, and it looks good on the back of a contemporary Christian T-shirt, but it's not what the scriptures teach. It does not say here that God's hatred is manifested towards the wicked deed. It says God's hatred is manifested toward the one who commits it. Now do not be mistaken, God's hatred is not like ours. It is not a self-centered, egotistical, selfish hatred. It is the reaction of a holy God against men who are vile. My mom used to say when bullets picked on me, Chris, don't react, act. In other words, don't try to get even with them. Act in a way that they will have to respect you. Just what do you think the wrath of God 
God is. Some impersonal thing that flies out from behind the throne of God. It is God. When people come to me and they say, Brother Paul, God saved me. I always love to ask them this question. From what did he save you? Well, he saved me from my sin. saved you from him. You know all those passages, prepare to meet thy God. God is holy. He cannot look upon iniquity. His eyes are too pure. The wrath of God is revealed against all unrighteousness. You and your sin being encountered by a holy God. There is only one response. Wrath. But God's love is of such a character that is even able to love and show love and demonstrate love towards the objects of his wrath. It is though with one hand God is holding back his justice against this world and with another hand he is pleading for men to come. But one day both hands will be dropped. You know that, don't you? Let me give you another example. Heaven is heaven because God is there. Well, that is the most that is true. But then the counter is not true. Hell is hell because God's not there. That's not what Scripture teaches. Hell is the wrath of Almighty God. Like Jonathan Edwards wrote in the sinners of the hands of of angry God, God delights in heaping tears upon the damned. So much for that verse of Scripture where God says, As I live, swears by under his own name, As I live, I have no pleasure at all in the death of the wicked. Did God lie? Did God take his name? Uh, did God take his own name in vain? It is his perfect justice revealed against men throughout an eternity. Now, some of you will walk out of here tonight shocked. You'll say, I've never heard anything like that. You'll say he was mean spirited, all sorts of things. But I can assure you, if you would only read old books, you would find out this is what preachers have always said. Oh, our Paul Washer, I will assure you, if you read old books, old, old books, not from that false teacher Calvin, Calvinism, but from the early church fathers, those who, those Christians who knew the apostles, you'd find out that your view of the atonement is a little bit different from Calvinist theology. And we'll get to that in a minute in this video. They don't say it anymore because they want big churches. We must warn men. We must tell men that God all day long extends out his hand to a disobedient, obstinate people. But at the same time, the wrath of God comes upon the world. Because God is a righteous, holy God. Have you not read the book of Revelation? This is not just Old Testament teaching. Okay, you get the point. God hates the sinner. So my question, had Jesus sinned? Hypothetically, he could have sinned, but he, uh, uh, in reality, he could, uh, he could not have sinned. But hypothet- let's say, let's say the impossible happened. Had Jesus sinned? Would God have hated his son? And so help me God, I curse God for this. If I don't, do not get my forehead of hair back. I curse the Holy Ghost if I don't get my forehead of hair back. And look good. And I don't want to curse the Holy Ghost. I surely don't. But I'm so angry at God. He doesn't love me enough to give me my fucking hair, freaking hair back. God himself is just. Now, there's a different view of the atonement. And I tended to believe this view because it was espoused by the early church fathers, who were closer to the time of Christ than Calvin was. God is not exactly. There are levels of sin. You don't believe it? Read where it said of Manasseh for all the innocent blood. Shed which the Lord would not pardon. The unpardonable sin. Jonathan Edwards wrote 
The blood of Jesus Christ is, uh, is efficacious enough to cover even the unpardonable sin. But God chooses not to forgive the sin because it is an insult against the entire trinity. This is a sin that God will not overlook. I, wrote, I read it. Uh, John said Edwards wrote it. So first, what Jesus died for? When, you, when, when sin entered the world, sin is a stain. Uh, but now what is the stain of sin? Well, God withdraws himself and leaves and lets the creation go its own way, which will inevitably lead away from God. And the more you sin, the angrier God gets. But God is not angry at the baby. God has pity, mercy. But at the same time, because of that stain of sin, God must atone for that stain by the death of Jesus Christ. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find the best words to explain this. And then once the sin is blotted out, all the laws against the sin that God makes, all the wrath of God is counted out too. But only because God can remove the stain. It's not just forgiving you on the ledger. Okay. I declare you righteous. Which is. That's part of it. But if, if your sin has been atoned for by the blood of Jesus Christ. You may. God may have to dang you, you over hell. To get the sin out of your being. It's already been atoned for by Christ. But you might have to experience the wrath of God. Just listen to the video. This pastor was rejected by God by Howard Pittman. What what about what the sins in Israel? Well, Moses pled with them to forgive them, and God said, "According to that word, how I have pardoned." You think all every one of them went to heaven? No, God overlooked the sin, but the stain was still there. You got to remove the stain. Uh, and once again, when God created everything, it was it had the choice to go towards him or away from him. If it chose to go away from him, God withdrew what he is. It's not just to satisfy the justice of God that Jesus died. That's just a symptom. It's to satisfy God himself. Because God has a picture of what everything should be. Everything, God's so pure that everything has to be pure to Him. I'm trying to find the word to describe this. But on that cross, God forsook Jesus. God damned Him. God literally damned Jesus. Had Jesus not been God, when He was delivered over to the devil, He'd still be in hell right now. God literally damned eternally Jesus Christ on that cross when he turned his back on Jesus. But if you read the early church fathers, the devil was in this for a nasty surprise when Jesus got down to hell. First he was God, so the devil couldn't hold him. And he took, took uh, because he was sinless, God could blot out the sins. And in blotting out the sins, this would mean God could actually remove the actual stain by restoring his presence, which he withdrew in the objects that sinned. And some it may, that's what that that's what salvation is. Restoring the presence of God so that the stain of sin is no longer there. It's not going to heaven. That's just a simple side effect of being saved. That is why the early church fathers taught that if you deny Jesus, you're damned. Watchman Nee says, once you got once you're born again, even if you fall into sin, you cannot lose that new birth. 
But the early church fathers taught you could forfeit your salvation. So is there some meeting ground? Watch the video by Howard Pittman. This pastor was rejected by God. Is it true once you've been truly born again, you cannot lose it? But you might have to walk through hell and back for God to, by the blood of Jesus Christ, remove the, finish removing, removing the stain from being because the, this sin stain is so embedded itself, embedded itself in your being that the only way God can remove it is first by the blood of Jesus Christ, by declaring it dead in Jesus Christ. And then, by the Holy Spirit, removing the actual stain. But the Holy Spirit of a presence. And since God cannot abide with sin is, he's got to burn it out before he, you can, he can bless you with his presence. And bring you before him in heaven, where there is no such thing as sin. I hope, I'm, I, hope I made myself clear. Man, I, screw God, I cannot find the words that describe what I need, what I'm thinking. I just cannot find the words. Screw God, fuck God for this hair loss. Screw God, I'm not a good looking guy. Screw God, if I, if my forms are not long. God does not love me enough to give, God did not love me like he loved King David. He gave David all those wives and concubines. For, for what other reason than to satisfy his huge Middle Eastern misogynistic sex drive? And he... He, if he did that for David and told, told, told King David, if all this had not been enough, I would have given you more. If he had loved me enough to give me, sure, I got Jesus and uh, all these blessings, but God is not enough. I got to have the good looks. I got to have the head full of hair. I got to be had long forms. Yes, it's carnal, but if God doesn't love me as much as he does King David, he has it right, but I'm still say fuck him. I hate playing second fiddle. That's all I've done all my fucking life. Play second fiddle. And play second fiddle with God? Fuck him. <laughs>